guys welcome back to Tila fashion today's video is so special to me because i tried my best to recreate this dress as close as possible to the original and i really love how it turned out so in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this dress and i'm also going to be showing you a few things that i would do differently on my second try because this is literally my first time making this dress so make sure to stick around till the end of this video and let's get right into this tutorial you hey guys when i say i study this dress i actually study this dress so two things i noticed that the neckline was that it has a high neckline and it also has neckline darts so i'm starting off with drafting the neckline darts to neckline darts so i took two inches away from the center front and the dart is five inches long to make the neckline that slants i'm just extending the lower part of the dart by half an inch and i'm going to make the dart one inch wide at the top there so half an inch to the left and to the right of the original dart line i made for the width of the neckline you're going to take your normal neckline width and add one inch to it to compensate for the one inch that that we took at the neckline there so my normal neckline width is 2.5 inches but i wish i had taken three inches instead because it ended up being tight and i added one inch to it to compensate for the that so from the point of the neckline width i'm going to go down by half an inch and this is going to be the new shoulder line because this is a high neckline it's kind of like a connected turtleneck so this is going to be the new shoulder line so i'm going to take my shoulder width divided by two then add one inch to compensate for the neckline that then to form the shoulder slope i'm going to go down by one inch from the new shoulder line and connect it to about one inch after the neckline width and i'm going to curve that out to the top of the pattern paper so to shaping out the neckline i'm going in by half an inch at the center front and then connecting it to the neckline width and i'm just going in with my marker to make it clearer for you to see next i'm taking my armhole length and i'm taking it to be 7.5 inches the armhole length forms the chest line i'm going to take in half an inch at the middle of the armhole length and this is just for the front piece now I can go ahead to connect the points together to form my armhole. Next, I'm going to go ahead to mark my reference lines. I already marked out the chest line, so marking out the bust line, the under bust line, the waist line, the hip line, although I forgot to mark out the hip line at this point, I later on added the hip line and the full length. So this dress has a princess that on it, but the special thing about it is that the princess that does not extend to the bottom of the dress it stops at the point where it has the pocket so i'm going to be making the princess that starts from the armhole and stops at the pocket so first i went ahead to mark my dart line which is four inches away from the center front and i'm connecting it to that mid armhole point that we made earlier so this is the point when I realized that I missed the hip line. So I'm just going ahead to mark out the hip line now. So at the point of the waistline, I'm taking in half an inch to the left and to the right of the dart line. And I'm doing the same thing at the under bust line. And then at the armhole, I'm taking half an inch to the left and to the right of the dart line. So I'm going to go ahead to shape in the darts like so to give shape to the dress. So oftentimes when you make your princess darts like this because the two sides are different in shape. One side tends to be shorter than the other. So I'm just measuring from the under bust to the armhole to see which is shorter so I could add back. So it was short by I think 2 inches or 1.5 inches so I'm adding that back into the measurement. So remember that the dart stops at the point of the pocket so I'm just measuring out where I want my pocket to be which is 23 inches from my shoulder and is about 2 inches above the hip line. So something else I skipped was that the 1 inch I took at the armhole for the dart it made the length of the armhole shorter so I'm just going to add that 1 inch back 
back into the measurement. So at this point, I could go ahead with my round measurement. I'm starting with the bust and I'm dividing my bust circumference by 4 and adding my seam allowance of 1.5 inch. I'll divide my under bust circumference by 4 and then add the 1 inch that we took for the dart before adding my 1.5 seam allowance. And I'm doing the same thing for the waist circumference. Divide by 4, add back 1 inch for the dart and then 1.5 inch for seam allowance. So I could get the oversized hip structure of the dress. I added 10 inches in total to my hip. So my hip is 37 inches. I added 10 inches making 47 inches. So I took 47 inches divided by 4 and added my 1.5 inch seam allowance. I added 1 inch to the full length of the dress to act as the seam allowance and I also went ahead to cut out the pattern. So I went ahead to transfer my reference lines onto another pattern paper for the back piece. Instead of making the zip allowance straight from top to bottom, I'm going to go ahead to give it some shape to accommodate for my hips, especially since the waist is very tight, you need space below it for the hips. So that's what I'm doing now. I just created like one inch space from the neckline down to the waistline and connected it to the hip line. Now I'm going to go ahead to make my zip allowance of one inch. Moving on to the back neckline, instead of the curved neckline that the front piece has, the back piece is going to have a straight neckline instead. And it's not going to be as wide as the front neckline because the front neckline has a dart. The back neckline doesn't have a dart, so it won't be as wide. So the back neckline width is basically the front neckline width minus one inch, which represents the dart size on the front neckline. And the same thing goes for the shoulder. You just trace out the shoulder on the front piece, onto the back piece, and minus one inch from it because the front piece has a dart and the back doesn't. I'm leaving the shoulder for now to move to the dart. The dart is 4 inches away from the zip allowance and it is 7 inches long. That's 3.5 inches to the top and bottom of the waistline and it is 1 inch wide. So I'm going ahead to make the armhole length which is 7.5 inches and basically doing almost the same thing I did with the front piece. That's my new chest line. Then I'm going to go ahead with my round measurements. So basically bust divided by 4, add my 1.5 inch seam allowance. Waist divided by 4, add 1 inch first for the dart and then 1.5 inch seam allowance. Hip divided by 4, add 1.5 inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to go ahead to make the cap sleeves and the length of the sleeve is 4 inches. Then I'm going to take my round sleeve measurement divided by 2. Whatever I get, I'll add 1.5 inch seam allowance to it. I'm going to bring the corner down by 1 inch just so the sleeves can fit better and connect it to the rest of the line. And then I'm going ahead to form my sleeve cap with 2.5 inches and I'm taking my armhole my armhole is 9.5 inches and i'm placing 9.5 inches down in a curved manner so then wherever 9.5 inch is i'm just going to mark that and then connect it and form my sleeve so i'm cutting this out and i added about half an inch for the bottom seam allowance now i'm done with pattern drafting i'll go ahead to cut my pattern on fabric and i use just three types of fabric white crepe fabric white cotton lining and my hair stain i know this dress looks like it has maybe bowing or crinoline but i promise you it doesn't need all of that to look structured you can use just these three fabrics i've mentioned and you would like the results so i start with my main fabric and i folded it in two to cut out the front piece and i'm cutting it with a seam allowance of about one cm around the edges where i have not added my seam allowance and you can see how I'm just trying to maneuver to cut out a seam allowance around that, that area. 
so after cutting out the front piece i went ahead to cut the two pieces of the back and i also went to cut two pieces for the sleeve also then i did the same thing for my lining so after cutting out the lining pieces i'm just making my lining pieces about half an inch shorter than the main fabric piece so that i would have a nice bottom seam when i'm done sewing i'm doing the same thing for the back piece lining and it's looking like this because i had to do a little cut and join on it because the fabric was not enough but it's the lining is not the main fabric piece so i'm not really bothered about it so after that i went ahead to iron my hair stay onto my main fabric pieces so this is my front piece after i've glued the hair stay to it by ironing now i can go ahead to start sewing and this is the lining so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead to join the dart lines together on the main fabric piece and the lining separately this is it after joining the dart lines together this is the main fabric piece and you can see that i notched the seam lines and i ironed it flat ironing this is very very important and you can see i did the same thing to the lining piece next i'm using my pattern paper to trace on the neckline that line so i could sew them so i'm sewing the dart lines on the main fabric and the lining fabric separately After sewing the dots, I'm just going to go ahead to create the pocket and I'm attaching a double weld flap pocket. So the measurement for the pocket hole is 5.5 inches. And when you're marking your 5.5 inches, you should mark it on the front side. So not the back, the front. And you just try to be careful with it since it's the front and this is a white dress. So any mistake you make could end up showing on the dress. So the way I placed the 5.5 inches is that I took 2 inches to one side of the dart and the remaining 3.5 inches to the other side of the dart. So these are the pieces I'll be using to create the pockets. I have the pocket flap, the welt and the pocket bag and they are all 6.5 inches wide because the pocket is 5.5 inches wide so they are 1 inch wider than the pocket. The flap is 6 inches long and the welt pieces are 1 inch long and when you fold them you get 3 inch and 0 0.5 inch. So I already folded my welt piece in two so I have them in the 0 0.5 inch form. So you are going to place them side by side on the line that we've created and you are going to sew two diagonal lines that are going to be exactly that 5.5 inch that we've drawn. And by the time that you're done sewing, you have like some extra welt fabric on each side. So then you're just going to go ahead to cut it open and make two triangular notches at the at each end. So I'll get my flap piece which is 6.5 inches wide. I'll turn it inside out and sew both edges by 0 0.5 inches so by the time i turn it inside out i'm going to get exactly 5.5 inches that we've created for the pockets now that i've created the flap i can go ahead to attach it to the pocket so the 5.5 inches space is going to fit the 5.5 inch flap that we just created so i'm just going to sew it on top of the top welt piece After sewing, I can then push the extra welt fabric on the edges inside through the space. Then I'm going to turn to the back side of the material so I could sew the welt pieces down. And I'm going to sew the welt pieces down as close as possible to the pocket, but not on the pocket. You also want to make sure that as you're sewing all these steps that you're ironing as you go so your pocket can look nice. 
as you can see this is how mine is looking now i can go ahead to attach the pocket bag the width of my pocket bag should be 6.5 inches and i'm taking the length to be 11 inches which is 5.5 inches on fold so i'll just go ahead to attach this to the top welt piece and the bottom welt piece i'm going to sew the sides together another thing to mention is that i'm using a very light fabric for my pocket bag so it could lap properly in the dress So this is how my pocket is looking i'll just set this aside so i could go on with the back piece so for the back piece first i'm just transferring the darts so i could sew the darts in so i'm going to sew the darts in for the two main fabric pieces and the two lining pieces so this is how the darts are looking this is the main fabric piece and then we have the dots on the lining piece also so now i'm going to go ahead to sew in the neckline and the bottom of my front piece and also the back piece using the lining pieces after sewing the neckline and the bottom of both the front and the back pieces this is what i have now i could just go ahead to close the edges so i'll close the edges of the front piece and for the back piece i'm closing all the edges except for the shoulder and the armhole so i could use that to join the front and the back shoulder together and that is going to happen later on but for now after joining the edges i'll just go ahead to attach my zip and you guys you need a zip that is long enough because the waist is very very tight so you want a very long zip funny enough this zip is actually not long enough for me and this is the longest zip i could find because i usually struggle to wear the dress so the longer the better so this is what i have after attaching the zip now i could just go ahead to join the front and the back pieces by the shoulder so the armhole area that we didn't sew together on the back piece is what i'm going to use to join the shoulders together so i'm going to flip the back piece over on the front piece by the shoulder and then sew by doing that the seam will not be visible both on the inside and on the outside at this point i'll just go ahead to join the front and the back pieces together by the side seams and i'm just measuring again so i don't make any mistake so after joining together this is what i have then i'll just go ahead to trim out the allowance trimming out the allowance is very important because it's not going to lap if there's a lot of allowance on the inside because of how wide the hip is so this is it after i flipped it over and i ironed now i'll just go ahead to attach my sleeves so first i'll just go ahead to sew the bottom hem notch top stitch and iron flat then i'll go ahead to close the top part i'll notch the middle and then attach to my armhole so after attaching i'll go ahead to measure my sleeve circumference divided by two mark it out and then join the two sides of the sleeve together and then close that edge I trimmed out the extra allowance on the sleeve and turned the dress inside out and this is what I have now. This is the final product and one thing I wish I did differently was to make the dress a bit longer because it's really short. I really love the dress though. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, you could drop them in the comment section and I'll do well to reply to all of your comments. Thank you and I'm going to see you in my next video.